As you can see here, I have my part open already. I'm gonna go ahead and look at it from a side profile and we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the manufacturer workspace. So now that I'm here, let's go ahead and click the turning tab and we're gonna do our setup. I'd like my Z the opposite way. I'm not super concerned about stock here, guys, because in the case of this part, we can adjust the stock afterwards. However, I do need to set my X and my Z proper to my part. So very quickly, I'm gonna go in and let's just do a turning profile rough. I'm going to use a CNMT right-handed tool and we're gonna let this rough out our part. So to start with, we are getting undercutting. However, I may not want that undercutting because I wanna come in with a different tool and I don't wanna come down or if I'm doing OD grooving to create that undercut, I don't wanna hit a slant or a chamfered kind of edge and deflect that tool. So we're gonna go ahead and jump back into that tool path and we are gonna turn that off. So we're gonna not allow grooving. And then from not allowing that grooving, we're gonna go ahead and right click and we're gonna create a derive operation. And now we're gonna do our turning profile finish, hitting okay. So now that we have our turning profile finish, we have a nice clean cylinder to work off of to create those actual undercuts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to turning profile rough and I'm gonna swap my tool out for a tool with a much greater relief on the backside, allowing that tool now to also do radial and axial grooving. So you may only wanna do you know, radial grooving, which would be one way versus the face of your part. Not a big deal. Again, we don't have face grooves here, but as you're seeing, it's actually recognizing the entire part and it's ignoring anything that we've already turned. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in there we're gonna to go to our geometry tab and we're gonna turn on rust machining and hit okay. And now you can see it's only machining the two little areas that have left over from our roughing and our finish cycle prior to. However, one thing that I can see is because the tangential angle here is greater than the relief of the backside of my tool, I can actually get that VNMT tool down in here to clear this one out. Now on this other groove, I'm having a problem where you know this actually tangentially comes off straight at 90 to that face. So I can't get that tool fully in there to knock out that undercut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to adjust my roughing profile. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that I'm gonna pick the edges that I want to stay within. So we're gonna pick our front edge here and then I'm gonna pick my back edge here. And then again, we're gonna hit okay. And now, as you can see, we've limited that tool path to only do what I'm calling the bearing groove, right? So again, we just rinse and repeat, we derive, we go into our turning profile finish. If I wanted to change my speeds and feeds, I would do that right here, but I'm just gonna hit okay and let this thing do what it does best, which is give me that turning path. Now, looking at this actual undercut at the back, if you're doing threading or something, or this is like a grease groove, or maybe you have a bearing race that's getting pushed on here and you need that square kind of corner effect, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do this a different style. And this is probably one of my favorite turning tool paths inside of Fusion that gets overlooked. And it's the ability to do a groove with a single pass. So it's almost a in and out, no step over, nothing of that nature. So now that I've picked single groove tool path, I'm gonna go ahead and select my tool. And in this case, I have an OD grooving tool already defined. And for the sake of this part, my insert size, which is you know a quarter inch ball here or a quarter inch diameter to do my eighth inch radius groove that's in my part, that's already defined. So we're gonna go ahead and accept and we're gonna select that tool. But now this is where this tool path has the power is it's asking me for a groove position. So if I tilt my part a little bit here is I'm gonna pick the edge that I wanted to find the tool path from. And at first glance, let's go ahead and square back up to our part and get our model out of the way. Is you're gonna notice that blue line, which is the farthest left side of my tool is actually going past that edge and in. And the reason for that is, is because it's asking for an adjustment, which is the middle currently of the tool. So the middle of the tool is trying to hit the edge that I selected, and we don't want that. We wanna stay in front of that edge. So again, now you see that blue line is pulled forward, meaning the far left of my tool comes in, which puts the head of my tool about here, and then we come down inside of our part. Now, the next problem we are gonna face is the fact that that line does not go deep enough because again, it's still defined based on that edge of selection. 
So if we go ahead and pull this open here, as you notice that it's very hard to see. So what I'm gonna do is based on the selected position, we're gonna go a eighth inch deeper. And as you can see, it's very rough, but that little blue line has grown now further down inside of my part. So that has now allowed that line to hit all the way down to the depth that I want based on that relief or that undercut on my part. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And as you can see now, my stock model has automatically updated to show that tool coming all the way down and plunging into my part and cleaning up this face all in the process. But now there's one more way I wanna show you. So we did do this with a turning tool. It is more of a finishing tool by all means. So that might be a little rough on that tool. Now I could come in with that same exact profile. Let me get my model turned back on and do a standard turning groove. What a standard turning groove can do is it can automatically find the positions that I need as well as do my finish and my roughing cycle all in one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my rest machining and we're gonna save from previous operations again and I'm gonna hit okay, which is gonna look a little funky at first, but keep in mind it's looking at everything we've done to this point. So we're gonna go ahead and reorder this. So by dragging this up and then regenerating again, as you can see, we've now found where we can go down into this part and rough it out and finish it. However, again, we are getting a little funkiness back here on the backside. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust our actual settings in the Z axis. So again, we go to Z geometry, we could use our selection from the front, we could use our selection for the back, again, hitting okay. And now we are actually going in and we're grooving in on the X axis and then creating our finished sweep in the X Z axis all in one move. So. That concludes Turning Tuesday, guys. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope being able to show undercuts in a couple of different theories of using a few different tools you may have in your shop being much more helpful when you're either using a single groove to relieve the backside of threads or you're using maybe a finishing tool that has the relief on the backside to cut that out. As always, have a great rest of your day, guys.